Hi friends, welcome to our JCon Technology Tutorial. My name is Karthik. In this video, we will be presenting to you a sample DSNL FTTH deployment. We will be covering the basics of the inventory used in the field and we will also demonstrate to you a sample data service configuration and a voice service configuration. I hope you would like it. I welcome you all into this journey. This diagram represents the brief network architecture currently present in the BSNL FTTH solution. As we can see here in this area, the Tejas GPON solution is deployed here. So we have a Tejas OLT here and a Tejas ONT in several of these sites. The Tejas OLT site can be any centralized location it can be a IT room of a office building or it can even be the basement of a apartment complex it needs to be ensured that this location is having a 24 hour electrical power supply here the ONT site the ONT site is typically the home it can also be the office desk or a office terminal. So as we can see here, we have an OLT and the traffic coming out of the OLT is taken through a single fiber and then we have a splitter through which several ONTs are connected and traffic is distributed to all these ONTs. Uh, here we can see the OLT has two interfaces. This is the Ethernet interface and this is the GPON interface. Through the Ethernet interface, connection or the uplink provided to the nearest BSNL router which is generally present in the nearest exchange. So here we have Ethernet type of traffic. In this interface, we have the GPON type of traffic further taken to the downstream ONTs. The traffic in the direction from OLT towards the ONT is typically called the downstream data and the traffic coming from the ONTs upwards to the OLT is called the upstream data. The typical distance for practical usage in an FTTH deployment is up to 20 kilometers. So this 20 kilometers refers to the optical fiber distance. Now coming to the uplink side, the Ethernet interface. We have an Ethernet port on this OLT. This port contains data traffic, voice traffic and management traffic. As we can see here in the ONT side, the ONT supports a data as well as voice solution. The ONT can deliver up to 1G of data traffic and parallelly it can also support a old telephone system. All the data and the traffic from the ONT comes in this path and gets converged on the OLT's Ethernet port or the uplink. You can see here data and voice are merged and then here we also have a management traffic. The management traffic is nothing but the various information present in the OLT like the alarms, the various details of the cross connections, the ONT serial number, ONT data and the IP address, OLT the DCN information and also the NTP settings or the date and time settings of the OLT. Data, voice and management traffic, they are connected to the nearest BSNL router. Generally, this router would be present in the nearest BSNL telephone exchange, which is located to the uh, nearest to the centralized place where the OLT is deployed. The traffic from the router 
is then carried to the BSNL MPLS cloud where division of the traffic is done. The data traffic or we can say the internet traffic is further moved to the BSNL's PPPoE server. This server does the username password authentication. The internet data provided to the end customer is provided on a username password authentication system. This server carries out the authentication and once it is successful, the user will be connected to the world of internet. Internet connectivity comes in this path. Next, coming back to the cloud, the voice traffic which is divided is pushed on this path and here we have BSNL's voice over IP server which is also called the SIP server. This server controls all the voice transactions amongst the ONTs and also the outside mobile network. Next, we have a management traffic here. Coming out of the MPLS cloud, the management traffic alone is diverted on this path and this is connected to the BSNL servers. We have a BSNL NMS server on which they will be able to monitor the condition of the OLTs and the ONTs and they will be able to see the various connections, service connections and the alarms. They can also do the centralized service configurations from here. We also have a NTP server. This is called a network time protocol server. The purpose of this server is to ensure that this OLT which has an internal uh, date time clock it is in sync with the BSNL centralized timing system. As you can see here I have explained the brief overview of the network. At this juncture I would also like to add a few points on IPTV services. Currently in the BSNL FTTH network the IPTV services are very few and rare and BSNL backend network doesn't carry that IP traffic. So we have private IPTV content providers who are outside the BSNL network and the, the network gets connected to one of the routers and then it is carried forward to the OLT directly. Now we will get into the details of the Tejas Gpon deployment solution. Tejas provides OLT and ONT as we can see here. So let's proceed to the next section of the video. Here on the screen we have a broad view of the various inventories required to commission a BSNL FTTH connection using the Tejas Gpon solution. We'll zoom in and now observe each of the inventories. Tejas ONT model TJ2100N12W with the inbuilt Wi-Fi antenna. Power adapter AC 230V to 12V DC having a 1 ampere current carrying capability. This is a sample optical fiber having square shaped green connectors of AC APC type at both the ends. This is used to connect the ONT to the splitter. This is a sample splitter having an optical power splitting ratio of 1 is to 4. It has one input coming from the OLT and four outputs. It can reduce the input power by 6 dB. This is the Tejas OLT model TJ1401. It's very compact, fits easily in a standard network switch rack. The OLT has a height of one rack unit less than two inches. These are 
uplink ethernet interfaces these are the gpon ports going to the ont this is the optical fiber that connects the olt pon port to the splitter one end has a blue connector of scpc type this connects to the pon port other end is a green connector of scapc type it connects to the splitter input this is the gpon sfp SFP stands for small factor pluggable module it has a inbuilt laser that connects to the fiber this SFP will insert into the OLT these are the gpon interfaces we see here that this is the port number 7 and the ports numbering is listed here from 1 to 8 moving right to left so now we'll insert this sfp into port number 
this is a fresh OLT and it is not having any configuration in it. The booting time of the OLT is about 15 minutes. So when we log in, this is the expected screen. We have come to the end of our video. I hope you liked it and I hope the knowledge which you have gained in this video, you will be able to utilize it in your own Tejas FTTH deployments of the field. If you have any technical queries, you can email it to our support team. Our email address is mentioned here, support at the rate tejasnetworks.com. When sending the email, please do make sure you send in the PO number so that we'll be able to quickly support you. Thank you.